Welcome to Business Ideas for Christian CEOs with Ken Gosnell. I'm Ken Gosnell and I am the CEO and founder of CEO Experience. We are a retreat company that is designed to help Christian CEOs hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. We do this by providing a variety of different retreats that enhances um, a leader's clarity through providing strategic learning and also strategic planning. We do this through peer retreats, individual retreats, through resources, or even team retreats. And so I'm excited about helping leaders hear those words well done. And today's episode, I wanna talk about one of the key biblical business principles that will really change and transform your life and your business if you will allow it. You see, I've done an extensive research and study on the Bible and as it relates to business stories. I've read every story in the Bible as it relates to leadership and business. And I found that there were certain key elements that I believe God was getting to us to understand, giving to us to understand if, if we would but listen on how we can have an uh, impact, grow our business significantly, but also have an impact in eternity. And if you look at the Bible and look at business, and I've studied business now also for over the last couple hundred years, and I've looked at the traits and the characteristics of those successful enterprises, and where did the two merge? How did companies become so successful and yet use these biblical business principles that shaped their philosophy, it guided their decisions, and it really determined their next steps. And those are the 12 biblical business principles that I believe every Christian CEO should master. In the early part of 2020, a book that I've written entitled Well Done will be released. And in that book, we're going to look at those 12 biblical business principles, why they work, how they work in a variety of different businesses, and how any leader can apply those principles to, to their leadership and their business and see great results, both in the here and now and in the hereafter. Today's episode, I want to focus on one of those biblical business principles that I believe is going to be essential to your success. And that biblical, biblical principle I've entitled, Know Your Order and Work Your Order. You see, every business understands that there's processes, that there's an order to get things done and to get it done effectively. You can't walk into a Starbucks or a grocery store or a fast food restaurant or any restaurant for that matter without understanding that they have a process of how things are ordered, how things are delivered, and how things are produced or the, the meal that is brought to you. Starbucks is a good example of this. You go in and you place your order and there's a barista behind the counter and they write your name on the cup and they write the order that needs the that you've ordered for your type of coffee. And then they hand it to a team member, another barista, and they fix that coffee. And then they put it at the end of your at the counter and then they hire, call out your name. And that's a simple order. And yet it's essential to the success of Starbucks and to every potential customer that they have. You see, every business has order, has processes. But many businesses, unfortunately, don't understand the order or the processes that they need to engage in in order to be the most effective. You see, I believe that this knowing your order and working your order is an essential aspect of growing a great business. And I get this principle out of the life of Jesus when in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, he says these words, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all of these things will be given to you as well. Now, I love the, the, the ultimate goal of this verse, Matthew 6, 33, where Jesus remind, is reminding his followers, uh, his team members, if you will, about the ultimate purpose that's yet ahead. That is to put God's kingdom as the top priority in our lives. Uh, he wants us to do that, whether we're a business leader, CEO, or whether we're just a, a worker that's in a company or an organization, or if we're unemployed. He wants us all to 
be about his business all the time. But I love the way in the simplicity in which Jesus communicates this message here in this verse when he says, seek first. We, we can't read Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 without first capturing those two ideas, those two words that Jesus makes at the beginning of that verse and let it begin to, to permeate every aspect of our life and every aspect of our business. Because, see, if we understand the order of things and we begin to work that order, then we can become much more effective and much more successful in life as well as in business. You see, Jesus had an order to things. See, he knew what was first and what was second and what was third and what was fourth and, and, and so on and so forth. And he never confused his order. Matter of fact, I, I did a little bit of uh, anal analyzing and research and looking at the ministry of Jesus, just to think about how he operated and, and ran his business. He, he had multiple priorities that he had to accomplish. I mean, let's think about it for just a moment. He, uh, he had the priority of, of uh, training his disciples. That was an important aspect of what he was supposed to be doing. He, he had the priority of, of, of healing uh, and doing miracles. That, that was an important process of what he was supposed to do. He had an uh, important task of preaching and teaching the message to proclaim his messiahship and to teach good words that were out to the crowds. So that, that, you know, Sermon on the Mount is a good example of that. That shouldn't be neglected. It's a critical aspect of what he was supposed to do. He was supposed to engage with the religious leaders of the day, the Pharisees, to teach and to preach. And, and that was an important order um, to do. But not everything can be number one. Jesus knew his order, and that's what made the difference of his effectiveness uh, in his ministry. You see, too many leaders today are unclear of what their priorities are, what the order of their business is all about, and what comes first, and what comes second, and what comes third, and, and so on and so forth. You see, Jesus makes a statement in Luke chapter 19, very clear statement. He says that his number one priority, his purpose, was to seek and to save those that were lost. He, he understood that's what his ultimate purpose was. And then everything that he did began to cascade under that. And his top priority in his ministry in order to seek and to save those that were lost is he trained 12 disciples. Matter of fact, the very first words he says to, to Peter when he, when he calls Peter to, to leave his nets, he says, come, I will make you a fisher of men. I will train you to and equip you and teach you so that you can go out and you can save other people, which is a fulfillment of my ministry and my calling and my purpose, is what Jesus would be saying to Peter. So it didn't mean that healing the lame or to engage with the Pharisees or to, to do some miracle wasn't important. It just meant that it wasn't the number one thing that Jesus was about in his life. He knew that in order for his business to succeed, his ministry to succeed, he had to invest and to pour time and energy and effort into the 12 disciples so that they could continue the ministry after he'd went to the cross and sacrificed himself for our sins and our forgiveness. You see, it, it's really critical that every business understands uh, the order. And it's funny to me because many uh, uh, non-Christian businesses understand order sometimes better than Christian businesses do. You know, Stephen Covey wrote the book, um, um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective Leaders, back in the early 1980s. He, he followed up with that. One of the principles in that book, uh, he illustrates the principle that we're talking about today. He called it the first things first principle. And he went on to write a second book. It didn't come quite as popular as the Seven Habits book, but his second book was entitled First Things First. And in that book, he wrote about the importance of effective managers and how they understand priorities and first things. He says in that book that effective managers put first things first. 
When leaders decide what first things are, it is the management that puts them first day by day and moment by moment. Management is discipline, carrying it out, he says. Discip discipline derives from disciple. Disciple to a philosophy. Disciple to a set of principles. Disciple to a set of values. Disciple to an overriding purpose to a superordinate goal or a person who represents that goal. Disciple to a first priority. Now, isn't it interesting that Mr. Covey would speak in such languages? He understood that the success of the principles that he wrote about were really rooted in, and grounded in the, the aspects of Scripture and teaching uh, the teachings of Jesus. And so here it is again, the imperative for us as Christian leaders and CEOs and business owners to think about knowing our order and working our order. You know, another modern day example of that might be the Chick-fil-A organization. It's, it's experienced explosive growth in the past dozen years or so, becoming the third largest fast food chain in America and they're closed one day during the week. It's an amazing aspect. I think Chick-fil-A is an embodiment of an organization that knows its order and it works its order. It knows what its first principles and priorities are, and they never sacrifice those priorities and principles. One of the first principles that they have by closing on Sunday is that they want to honor God in everything that they do. You know, recently I was able to review a book by Steve Robinson. Steve Robinson was the chief marketing officer for uh, Chick-fil-A, and he recently uh, launched his own uh, company. I'm sure he's a dynamic CEO, and I look hope, hope to have him as a personal friend one time. But he talks about some of the lessons in his book. Um, he, his book is entitled Convert Cows and Chick-fil-A. And uh, he talks about some of the lessons that he learned in his years as a chief marketing officer at uh, Chick-fil-A. And he talks and he recalls in the book about one time where the executive team was debating and arguing about the future and the direction of Chick-fil-A. And he writes about this, this meeting, this uh, um, retreat that they, the leaders went on to reorganize and to review and to, to recalibrate um, what they needed to do in the future. And when he comes, what he says in the book, I think is very profound as it reminds us of this principle of knowing your order and working your order. Here, here's what he writes in, in his new book. He says, the Holy Spirit had orchestrated something we even had not planned to do. We had captured the words of Truett Cathy, who was the founder of Chick-fil-A and how he was already leading the business. We had all been attempted to live his model but now we had a statement to help us to follow it completely. You see, we weren't not just a Christian business, but rather a business where the owners and leadership aspired to apply and live out the biblical principles. And in 1982, at our moment of deepest uh, financial crisis, we stepped back and determined why Chick-fil-A existed. We embraced that purpose and we were sobered by it. We were all part of leading a unique business, to say the least. Here's what they came out with. After two days of intense discussion and multiple drafts and debate and prayer, the group had written their purpose statement to express the reason for their existence, to know their order. And here's what they found. And it's still their mission statement today. The Chick-fil-A mission statement reads, to glorify God by being a faithful steward of all that's entrusted to us and to have a positive influence on all who come into contact with Chick-fil-A. Now, isn't it interesting that in this moment of financial crisis and great difficulty, that Chick-fil-A had to be called back to the order of things. They had to remember what their top priority was. And then from that moment forward, they had to go and work that priority 
to make sure that that priority stayed number one and number two would follow and number three and number four and number five and so on and so forth. Now it's hard to um, argue with the success that Chick-fil-A has um, achieved in, in business and, and in culture. And in the midst of all of their success, in the midst of everything that could distract them, they remembered that their ultimate purpose was to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. They, they wrote it a little different way. They said that their ultimate purpose was to glorify God in everything that they were to do. Now, let me challenge you for a moment in business. Some people get into business for lots of different reasons. They try to start a business because they have some new product or idea that they want to bring to the marketplace. Maybe they want to start a business because of their own personal calling and they want a little freedom from um, maybe culture or corporate living. There, there's many reasons that God may have put into you the goal of starting a business. But if you're a Christian in the marketplace, you should never forget that your ultimate purpose, your number one goal, is to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. You see, see that's, the, that's the number one goal that we're all about. And when I talk with Christian CEOs and remind them of the biblical business principles, when I, when I talk with leaders and I remind them that, that what they're trying to accomplish in the life of their business, they can accomplish it quicker, better, faster, uh, if they're intentional about applying those biblical business principles to their business, they're almost amazed at the integration that begins to happen as they elevate God as the top priority in their business. So here's a couple questions for us to consider today is, as we think about um, uh, applying this principle to your life and to your business. Number one, is God the top priority in your life and in your business? Can you say that everything that you do in your business is according to the principles and the patterns that God has set forth from you? It, it should be in every aspect of your business, whether it's in how you treat your customers, whether it's how you pay your vendors, whether it's how you treat your employees and, and work to have cut, retained customers and retained employees, whether it's how you build your culture, whether it's how you produce your products. I mean, every aspect it could come into this mentality of we're seeking first God's kingdom and his righteousness. But then secondly, I would say to you is, do you let people know that that's your top priority? You see, Chick-fil-A has done a great job in closing down on Sundays and communicating that God is their top priority in everything that they do. And that's part of the reason that they don't work on Sundays. Now, Truett Cathy actually did that for another reason. He applied another biblical principle that we'll talk about in another episode. He applied the golden rule back in the early uh, 1950s and 60s, whenever it was that he started Chick-fil-A. He had one restaurant down in Atlanta, Georgia, and he loved to go to church and his faith was important to him. And so he decided that no matter what, no matter what the business would become, that he was not going to sacrifice. He he, he knew what his priorities were. He was not going to sacrifice his spiritual life for his business. And so he decided that he was not going to work on Sundays. That was a personal decision that he was made. And then the next choice became, well, if I'm not going to work on Sundays, what do I need to do with my employees and my restaurant? And he practiced the golden rule, which was treating other people like he'd want to be treated. And he decided that if he didn't want to work, then his, probably his employees didn't want to work either. And so he decided to close the business on Sunday, both as a way to honor God and as a way to honor his employees and his team. You see, it's amazing what happens when we begin to do things according to God's patterns and God's ways. So one application is for you to think about, is God the top priority of your life and of your business. Another priority is for you to think about is, are you clear about the order of the things that you're supposed to do uh, each month, each year, each day of the life of the business? You see, when the leader becomes clear then about the order of things, then things become easier to understand. 
And when I know what I'm supposed to do this day, it's clear, here's my number one priority, here's my number two, here's my number three, and so on and so forth, then all of a sudden I get more productive and effective. And when I train my team to do the exact same thing, that every day has a list of priorities, that there ought to come a first thing and a second thing and a third thing and a fourth thing, then all of a sudden we become more efficient as a team and as an organization. I have a good mentor and friend uh, by the name of Doug Hilmuth. Doug has just celebrated 40 years in business in the Washington, D.C. area. He's grown four different um, shops that work, that do uh, it's, uh, auto care uh, facilities that take care of uh, all the auto needs that you might have in, in, uh, as you own your automobiles. And he's run a fantastic shop, obviously, for 40 years. He's grown a team and and he has certain philosophies and leadership principles that he's applied from the biblical, um, the biblical lens to his business, and he's been quite successful with it. But Doug has a practice that uh, every Sunday night he sits down and he makes a list of his top priorities for the, for the week. And he knows every day of the next week what his job is, what God's asking him to complete that rest of the week. He, he's been clear about what he wants. So when he knows, when, when the leader is clear, things become easier. When the leader knows the order, things become easier to understand. And when the leader becomes clear, everything in the organization becomes clear. And I just, I think these principles are the principles that should guide every aspect of our life because they impact every single thing that happens in the life of our business. When you see a business that's not growing, this order has happened. When you see a business that is stuck or stagnant, um, there's confusion about what's the top priorities. When you see a person that doesn't know where they're going in their job or even at the top of the organization, a reassessment must take place because life is too short and business is too tough to not be clear about the order of things. Now, let me share you one other thing before we conclude uh, this episode. I, I think it's important um, to, to remind ourselves of the value of, of this order and make another application of it as it relates to, uh, to business. So uh, I mentioned earlier in the episode that every business has certain uh, processes that are critical to the success of that business. And I believe it's really critical for every business owner to set and think about the key concepts or key processes that are critical for the success. And let me just give you a couple of those of the importance of order, and um, then you can begin to apply those potentially to your business. I think one is every leader needs to be clear about the sales process of their organization. How, how do we recruit uh, sales, pe- uh, sales uh, to come into our company? What does the ordering process look like? How do we make it easy for people to buy our products and services? You see, too many businesses flounder today because they never make this a top priority in their business. They never understand how to acquire sales or to market in the marketplace to gain attention and garner attention uh, uh, for the life of the business. Uh, A sales process is critically important to every successful business. I think a second process that's important is a a team onboarding process, a a culture process, if you will. You see, a leader will only be able to lead a business for so long by themselves, and then they're going to need a team. We'll talk about that in another episode with another biblical business principle that states when your team gets better, your organization gets better. But very few teams or organizations spend much time thinking about the onboarding process of a new employee. How do we recruit new employees? How do we find new employees? And how do we onboard them successfully into our organization so that they can integrate quickly and fast so that they can be about their work um, so that our business can continue to grow in, in the marketplace? I think that's really critical for us to understand as well, um, the onboarding of new employees. I think another critical process for us to think about in business and to know the order of which we're about is how do we uh, um, produce and supply um, uh, products to our customers? Can we improve those processes internally so that outwardly things are a lot more smoother and 
Uh, customers are getting what they want in a timely uh, fashion. Those internal operations are really critical for our success in order to analyze uh, if our company is a good steward of everything that we have and where to go from it. You see, that's a critical process for us to understand. And then I think a fourth process that every business needs to understand is what I call the process of uh, customer service and retention. How, how do we engage our customers to let, to let them know that we appreciate that um, they've, they've bought or purchased our product or service and that we want them to come back and be a repeat customer and develop a long relationship with them. You see, I think there's a kingdom impact mentality when we develop a long relationship with the customer base. We have many opportunities to spread our seed or to give influence into their lives about how they can impact or do things for God's kingdom. And so I think a retained customer is, a, is an advantage. I just recently writ, wrote an article for business.com on the advantage of a retained customer. And uh, I believe that that's a critical, not only for businesses' success, but also for kingdom impact. Because the longer you can keep a customer, the more opportunities you have to, um, to, to um, move that customer closer to a relationship with, uh, with their Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, so every business has certain processes that are, that are critical to its success. And so they start with knowing your order. What is the order of things and understanding that there's a first, a second, a third, or a fourth, or fifth. Now, here's a real quick, easy way to begin to develop the processes in your organization and know what your top priorities are. I would encourage you to develop checklists on major things and initiatives around your organization. So develop a checklist on how uh, a person can buy your product or service. Develop a checklist on how to recruit and onboard a new employee. Develop a checklist to check on your customers to see if they're happy about the product or service that they're developing. Develop a checklist on how do you build your products and services. And if you just start to put together a series of checklists in your organizations, they can be a great asset and a great tool for your company in order for you to move the ball forward so that you can become a successful organization and a more effective leader. Well, this is an important uh, biblical business principle and I hope that you've enjoyed this episode of Business Ideas for Christian CEOs because I believe that one of the most critical business ideas that any Christian CEO should embrace is the idea of knowing your order and working your order. Remember again the words of Jesus when he simply stated it. He said, seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. And notice what he said at the end of that verse. And all of these things will be added unto you. Now, Jesus is teaching this uh, uh, statement in uh, Sermon on the Mount. And he's giving a list here of the the benefits of living in a deep relationship with Christ. He talks about the importance of peace, and he talks about the importance of, of um, blessings overflowing, and he talks about the importance of not having to worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will take care of itself. He talks about the importance of how to pray and how to stay connected to God. I mean, he gives this long list of the desirables of everything that we would want in our life and that everybody strives for to some degree. And he gives us the biblical secret in verse 33, where he says, all these things will be added to you if you know your order and you seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. Do you see, don't miss the order of this. Don't miss the order of your life because it is really critical to your success in your business and in your, in your own personal life. And this principle, knowing your order and working your order, it, it, it will work in business, it'll work in your company or organization, it'll work in the community, it'll work in your family, it'll work in your in, as an individual leader by yourself. If you just wake up every morning and you know what your orders are, if you know what the top priority is, and then the second, and then the third, it'll help you to be successful and efficient in any task that you touch, any project that you try to build, and any product that you're releasing. Hey, take this best idea today and apply it to your business, and then you'll hear the words 
well done.